So last time I showed you guys when we were trying to find sine of 15 degrees and then we ended up with three different looking answers. Today I will show you that they are all equal. I'm going to start with the first one right here. This is the same as that. I'm going to start with the left hand side. We have 1 over 2 times the square root of 2 plus square root of 3. So what we'll do is, if we look at the inside, 2 plus square root of 3, let's multiply it by its conjugate on the bottom and also on the top. But this is inside of this big square root. So we will have to put a big square root first, and then the conjugate of this. The conjugate is just to change the plus to a minus in between. So 2 minus square root of 3. And we'll do the same thing on the top. And uh, as we can see, on the top, 1 times that is just that. So square root of 2 minus square root of 3. Aha! That's what we have. So this looks promising. As of the bottom, we have a 2 in the front. And then square root of this times square root of that. We can just multiply the insides together. Because this inside is positive, and this is also positive. Because square root of 3 is less than 2. So, we can multiply that and put that inside of the square root. But multiplying an expression in terms of a plus b and a minus b will end up a squared minus b squared. So we just have to do the first term, which is 2, square that, minus the second term, which is square root of 3, and square that. Well, this is just 4, and then minus square, square root cancel, so it's just 3, and then 4 minus 3, which is of course 1, and that's just equal to 1. So as we can see, the top is square root of 2 minus square root of 3, and the bottom is just 2 times 1, which is just a 2. So as we can see, this is indeed the same as that. Next, for this being equal to that, it's a little bit trickier. But it's okay, let's do it together. I'm going to start with the left hand side square root of 2 minus square root of 3 over 2. And this is an example of what we call a nested square root, because we have a little square root inside of a big one. And perhaps this is the first time that we encounter a nested square root question in a pre-calculus class. Because remember this expression came from the half angle formula for sine, and this one right here came from the angle difference formula for sine. So they do show up. But now, how can we verify that this is indeed the same as that though? Well, check this out. Somehow this square root on the outside just disappeared. We have two little square roots like this subtracting. So, let's make some observations. If we want to end up with this, wouldn't it be the case that the inside here is in fact a perfect square? Because that's the only case for the square and the square root to be cancelled. So, if we look at square root of a minus square root of b in general, and let's say we want a to be bigger than or equal to b, so this expression is non-negative. Have a look. I'm going to look at square root of a minus square root of b. Let's square that. But of course I will change the whole thing. Don't worry though. Take the square root afterward. So of course, if you just cancel this and that out, you get this back. Yep and under the condition that the sign is non-negative. But here, I'm actually going to keep the square root on the outside. Let me just multiply this out. Square root of a minus square root of b squared, we first square this, which is just going to be a, and then minus 2 times this and that, so 2 square root of a and square root of b, and then we add this square, which is just b. And then we can actually just rearrange it a little bit, a plus b minus 2 and of course if we start with this a and b have to be non-negative so right here we can multiply the a and b inside of the square root aha if we do this we end up with a nested square root situation that looks like this is a kind of so now if we can somehow make this expression look like this then we know what the answer is, because it must be square root of a minus square root of b. 
Cool, so how do we make that happen? First, we have the two on the bottom. Let's just put that in the front like this. Let's focus on the square root. Two minus square root of three. Now, here, it looks that we should have a two, right? But we don't. What can we do? Well, how about let's try multiply the top by two and also divide the two right away. Yes, two times that will give us a two in front of the square root of three. It matches with that. But here's a small issue. On the bottom, I will just have a two. Square root of two, that will be irrational on the bottom, which is not really good, right? So instead of multiplying two and two, why don't we try an even number? And that's also happened to be a perfect square. So why don't we try multiply the top and bottom by four? Because this way, square root of four is just a regular two. Oh, okay. So let's see. Here we have one half, and then the four on the bottom in the square root, I will just purpose it ready like this. Hopefully make it more clear. And then the inside, we focus with the square root, eight minus four square root of three. Cool. And of course, this is just a regular two on the bottom. So this right here will give us one half times one half, which is one over four. It looks promising, yeah? Cool. Now what though? This is a two, this is a four now, but we really wanted to have a two. Don't worry, four is the same as two times two. So I'm going to break it down. Two times two is equal to four. Okay, yes. But how about this part? Well, for the two right here, I'm going to purposely write it as square root of four. Because this way, we can multiply the square root of 4 with the square root of 3 and put that as square root of 12. Aha! So, let's see, we have a square root, we have the 8 right in the front, minus this right here, we still have the 2 in red, but again, this and that, let's put it as square root of 12. Now, this is exactly in this form. So now, we will have to think about two numbers so that they add up to 8, and then when they multiply, we will get 12. So that's the question. Two numbers A and B such that A plus B equals 8, and then A times B equals 12. So it's kind of like factoring a trinomial, right? And if you think about it, 6 and 2 works. And be careful. Because in order for this to work, we have to make sure that A has to be bigger than B because we have to make sure the inside is positive because this is a subtraction. So we will say A equals 6 and B equals 2. All right, so we have the 1 over 4 in the front. And then this right here will just give us square root of A minus square root of B, which is square root of 6 minus square root of 2. Of course, you can put this over 4, just like what I have over there. So they are indeed correct. And they are all equal to sine of 15 degrees.